Hey there you cool cats and kittens, 3D Hero here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build for this week's content. Today I have a special build that makes use of the Bombarda exotic boots with Warmind cells to create a all out Bomberman build, which literally consists of bombs, Warmind cells, dodges and even more bombs. This build here goes out to all you guys who love and enjoy all things explosive, as I'm sure there are a bunch of you guys who love the Bombarda boots and know how to fully use them in places like PvP but may not know how to fully expand on them in PvE environments, since most of the builds and recommendations I've seen focuses on them using primarily in PvP solely. With this version here, it will allow you to create Warmind cells per every punch you pull, which overall debuffs the enemy and every time you dodge, you'll be able to produce a miniature bomb that will either kill or weaken them, but this will overall give you all your abilities back to repeat the process as many times as you like, but there are some risks to using it, as which I will cover later on in the video. Now, I suggest you guys sit back, take some notes, grab some food, and enjoy the rest of the video for what it has to bring. Starting things off with the subclass, we will be sticking with Way of the Warrior tree line to make full use of his melee focused setup, and to allow us to proc more myself continuously, but also allow us to combine it with our dodge ability to create the overall loadout. Everything about Way of the Warrior is designed for CQC, which is why when you see someone do a 1-2 punch build with Liar's Handshake, this is the most efficient and best method to go about it, with best results. In this build here, it will provide a number of benefits to the user to create the ongoing cycle of bombs and millies. For example, Combination Below will trigger a health regen and damage increase up to times 3 which will always be proccing to maximise the damage, and then Deadly Reach will increase our melee range further for lunging benefits. But the most effective tree perk is Combat Flow, where upon many kills you get your dodge ability back, and this perk here is the one that you'll combine with Gambler's Dodge to get all of your melee fully back and to repeat the Wombo combo as many times as you please. If you can see where I'm going with this then you can understand pretty much the rest of the build, as your melee will regain your dodge ability, and upon dodging nearby enemies you gain back your melee, so rinse and repeat for a near perfect combo loop. Now for your grenade, you can pick and choose which one's best to play with as you'll make use of them wherever you can. Personally, skip grenades seem to be the most best in terms of tracking and aggressiveness, while arc bolt can tackle multiple groups of mobs at once, although it does have to be thrown quite close to them for it to be fully effective. For weaponry, you're going to want to focus on close quartered weapons, although heavy wise, you can have something long range if you're against a mob, a boss, or even a gamut player at unreachable areas. For primary, I've gone with a 1-2 punch Hawthorns with field prep and a boss prep mod that does very nicely against bosses and mages when in a pinch. Not exactly the most easiest role to get, nor the most simplest of weapons to grind for, as it's part of a wide world pool. You can try your luck with Raul through his 750 engrams if you have the shard to spare. Alternatively, Perfect Paradox from last season and One Small Step from the Moon Weapon Bounties are also great weapons to have in this place, with similar roles or even having a aggressive frame shotgun with swashbuckler, or even trench barrel can do the work, although not as great as a 1-2 punch shotgun, like the Hawthorns. Secondary wise, I recommend the new 7th Serif sidearm, the SI-2, with full auto and Vorpal. Now with Vorpal providing a 50% damage increase against bosses, and the full auto allowing our shot to be more consistent, it becomes a sort of mini backup weapon for boss DPS, when your heavy or your main weapon, such as your shotgun, runs out, and boy does it do a lot of damage when it stacks. I've also chosen the weapon to prop all my cells as well, which is a nice backup in case I get into myself in a scenario where my melee and dodge are both completely out. Our heavy now can go two ways, you can either go with a sword, which is perfect for up close DPS and has great ammo reserves that can be used on the regular or boss type mobs, or you can go with a weapon that can cover close, medium and long ranges, such as the 7th Serif machine gun or the interference grenade launcher with spike grenades. Whatever choice you pick, it's best to have some options available if you're playing in Gambit, for example, against invaders and bosses, or if you're simply playing in strikes where the enemy is in a unreachable area through melee means. If you choose swords like I do, try and have one with high guard efficiency for blocking purposes, which will allow you to be more effective when going up against bosses up close, especially when they do the stamp mechanic on you. For stats, our mobility needs to aim to around 90 to 100 to make full use of the dodge cooldown, and in my case here, we have reduced it down to a lot, to around a 13 to 11 second ish cooldown. Although yes, we do have combat flow for providing instant melee recharge and gambler dodge to combo with it, you may get in moments where you can't actually kill your targets, 
which means you won't be able to get your dodge back to do the bombard on wall myself combo, which overall will make the build fall short on itself. This is where placing it at this level will come in handy for a short duration. One thing to note, I have achieved this level with my mobility thanks to armour that comes with high mobility built into them and then added on the best friends mod from last season for a plus 20 in mobility and then added on the traction mod for extra measures. Overall you're going to need to invest in a lot in this area to make sure the mobility stat is where you feel it's adequately good without sacrificing too much into the more important areas. The rest of the stats should be around the 50s for both recovery and resilience like normal and don't worry about needing to upgrade your strength stat to get your melee back up again as generally this area is already covered through our main tree line perk. For armor, the bombarded exotic boots with any affinity applied to it is all that you generally need as this will be combined with the warm eye cells and dodge ability to create the fascinating wombo combo loadout. Depending on your mobility level, you may want to attach a traction mod to apply further stats to your mobility if needed. Plus the title radius turn built within the mod may prove useful if you decide to use this in PvP for example. Also affinity wise, do not worry about which one you pick as there's no specific ones you'll need unless you pick a specific affinity to correspond with your weapons. The rest of the armor, you're going to need either a season 9 or season 10 armor piece for the necessary mods I have. You'll need one void armor piece for the warm and protection mod and one arc affinity cloak, mark or bond to slot in the best friends mod. That's it. From there, you can choose whatever type of armor you want to go from there. Now for the mods, you do have the following. For head, we have recovery, sidearm, ammo finder and warm and protection mod. For arm, we have mobility, enhanced momentum transfer and global reach mod. For chest, we have recovery and tyrant surge mod. For leg, we have mobility and traction mod. And then for cloak, we have outreach, distribution and powerful friends mod. Now if you have everything that I have shown or have alternatives like mentioned, then you should be ready to go out to the testing phase to see if it works out like imagined, while also ironing out any issues along the way. The main gist of the build is that once you're in close proximity of the enemy, you melee first to proc a wall my cell, but don't destroy it unless you really need to. This wall my cell produced will have the mod wall my protection activate, which reduces the amount of damage mobs do to you and will help you with leaving in and out of danger against certain stronger mobs. Your next step will be to then dodge near the group of enemies, which should activate your boots exotic and kill those with an explosion or just weaken them. If it outright kills them, then great, you should have a full stack of million dodge up already, to which you can then reapply the technique again. Now if the mob survives in some way, which it will happen a lot, you can either use your million dodge combo to finish them or use your weapons to finish them. It's honestly all that simple. No tricks, no glitches, no nothing, it's literally that simple and incredibly easy to do, that in truth, you don't actually need to do the first step that I actually mentioned. If you truly wish to, you can actually go ahead and do a dodge and then melee combo instead, as the process is still the same, just the method I have is more effective and a lot more easier to replicate 100% of the time. When you try it the first time against a group of minor or major mobs, you'll find it works great for clearing out those that can easily swarm you, or give chase, like when you go up against a group of fowls, who are incredibly dangerous when in groups and can easily trap you and rip you to shreds. But with this build here, we can easily dispatch them with our woman's cell to achieve this. And then we can use our bombarder boots, exotic, to weaken or outright kill them. And in all of this process, we will fully get back our melee and dodge ability. So it's a win win all around, wherever you use it. The same now can be done against bosses as well, surprisingly, but very limited to the few, as it can only work against those that are generally on the ground and near you to pop this off. Although, I wouldn't say it's wise to go ahead and use this to solely take on bosses as much as it sounds fun to do, as the damage you do alone won't be big enough for a simple boss DPS. Plus, with the stamp mechanic, this may make it a whole lot harder to pull off at times. Now, if you do decide to go ahead, do be sure to use the following weapons that I have recommended to actually go up against bosses to do so, because with these type of weapons here, it gives you a better fighting chance against them. But maybe you want to go ahead and try this out for a challenge branch, I, I don't know. By all means, try out however way you want, but just remember, I didn't say you can go ahead and do this. Just giving you a warning. The build though is very situational to play with, as in some content, you can make full use of the deadly combo with nothing stopping you. Since your technique being done will help with setting up the field to your advantage. And then your main weapons are what will aid you against the tougher ads, where it may not have the most biggest effects when you're doing your combo. 
but at the same time, this build can cause a lot of trouble when you're being surrounded by too much ads. And even with your warm protection mod active, it doesn't mean you'll survive 100% of the time. Just enough to do the deed and then back back off. And this isn't a negative take on the build to where you shouldn't be using it, no. In fact, it's more of a good take to be aware of this, as not all builds need to be DPS focused in most endgame content. Just need to allow you to have fun, and generally allow you to survive. Generally, the main two things to worry about when creating the build. Is it fun? And, can, and how long can you survive? For me personally, it's rather different to where we don't need to use our weapons all the time, and it's actually quite exciting to play with at times, as the damage is decent, it's not the greatest, but it's not terrible either. But it can be increased to being devastating the longer we stay on the field, and also these types of builds are the ones that most players look out for when they want to change the gameplay up completely. But not too much where they can't use in other endgame content like raids or nightfalls or even gambit. Yes, even Gambit. Like I mentioned earlier before, the downside to using this build, which isn't surprising at all, is just being overwhelmed. The build works great when activating in groups because of the synergy involved and how surviving the encounters will reward you back with a full restack of abilities, which is generally the way to go with the setup. However, this can go against you if you go up against too much enemies who are clustered and are in melee range to deal extra damage to you. And is much more worse when you're surrounded and up against an enemy who is either heavy shielded, has a major level of health, and also primarily uses melee to deal lots of damage. In that situation there, there's not a lot you can do in terms of getting out of it, as if your bombarders don't kill them, then you better pray your shotgun or sidearm or anything can simply do the damage for you. But simply jumping out of the way tends to do the trick every now and then. Or better off, if it becomes too dire of a situation for you, you can always detonate your cells for more breathing room, even though they're meant to be left dormant for you to activate the debuff. If things get too serious and you know you won't be able to get out of it, and you've got a clear shot of your my cell, detonate it. No problem, because you can always make another one later on, but detonate it, because generally that's the whole point of them being there. Another thing to be aware of is the amount of physical damage you take while playing around with the build. Although our stats are where we need it to be, it does feel kind of squishy which may be because of the risk reward design for going about our business. If you feel this may be a burden, do add on the minor, major and boss resist mods to help, but only if you have the stats at the required super level. Alternatively, you can add on the concussive dampener mod for reducing every effect damage, which if I had a chance, I would have definitely added it on. But in this case here, you can't, and to be honest, the amount of damage I take from generally the bosses from their stomp mechanics with and without it is incredibly noticeable. I would need to do a bit more testing to see exactly how effective it truly is. Effectively, the build does what it's described to do, and it does it effectively against the minor and major mobs, and I would say in content where these guys are plentiful is where you get the most fun out of it. As long as you don't get too cocky or crazy with the dodges near enemies, you'll have a blast with it, no pun intended. And I'm 100% sure there's plenty of room to mix and match the set for I War My Cells, if the one I currently have isn't for you. Remember, you can mix and match the builds however you want. I'm just giving you guys a template, you take it away from there. So if you enjoyed the video, then by all means please leave a like and a sub. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.